Is salt good or is salt bad? Well, in today's podcast, we're going to dive into the benefits of salt and why you might need more salt than you think to improve your performance and keep you hitting PRs in your workouts. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, we are going to be talking about why salt is good for you and when and why salt can be used. Yeah, this is a hot topic that we're going to dive into electrolyte supplementation, the benefits of salt and sodium, um, and how it can help improve your performance, how it can help improve your recovery, and more than likely why you are deficient in sodium, yes, but even all of your electrolytes, your potassium, your magnesium, the things that you need, especially if you're training hard. So before we hop into that, we do want to announce that we are super pumped that our Fit Grind Pink Starburst electrolytes are now available. We've been working on these for the past five months yeah. um, from label design to product development to compliance to third-party testing. Um, so we are super pumped. Those just hit the shelves last Friday. We just launched those last Friday. So if you are interested in checking those out and supporting our brand, head over to fitgrindformula.com. I will leave the link in the comments in the description below if you're watching on YouTube um, or if you're listening on some other streaming service or platform. Like I said, fitgrindformula.com. And we just want to say thank you for the support and we're excited to keep launching new products and developing out our supplement line. Yeah, so jumping into electrolytes and why we use electrolytes and when we use electrolytes. So what this looks like is if you are somebody who eats a balanced diet, that's great, but the chances of you getting the proper nutrients to keep you hydrated is a very slim chance. Yeah. And especially, you know, a lot of people think water, water, water. Water isn't going to cover the proper electrolyte pH balance that our body needs. Our electrolyte product that we are bringing to the shelves. So the reason that we decided to launch this product is because we are hybrid athletes. So we're in the gym sweating and working hard. We're in here hours and hours throughout the day and our bodies are obviously in need of those replenished electrolytes after a challenging workout. Yeah. Yeah. There's a huge deficiency in electrolytes and salt is kind of the main thing that we're talking about today, sodium, but there's other electrolytes too as well, namely your potassium and your magnesium. When Whenever we're talking about electrolytes and electrolyte neutrality, that's the whole goal of, of, of increasing performance is to maintain as neutral electrolyte levels as possible. And any time the neutrality is broken where we have a decrease in electrolytes, that's where you start to see huge decreases in performance. And it can be a small amount too. And, and like you mentioned earlier, I think a lot of people think that water is how we hydrate. And yes, you do need a significant amount of water even if you're not working hard, like our body is made up of mostly water. So we need a lot of water throughout the day. But if you are working super hard, you go for a long run, you're sweating it out, or you're going through a really hard strength training workouts and you sweat, you're losing electrolytes through the sweat. And if you don't replenish that, that's where you put yourself out of electrolyte neutrality. So that is a huge benefit of taking an electrolyte supplement is it gives you the crack. It fills the crack where you need in your diet. That's the whole goal of supplements is to fill in the cracks of where you're not going to be able to get enough potassium, magnesium, and sodium. If you're working out, you're training hard through your diets and it doesn't cut it just to put some salt on your food. That's great, but you need to have the balance, the correct balance of potassium, magnesium, and sodium. Yeah. So in your workouts, this is going to help boost energy, increase your recovery and your endurance. So like I mentioned, Jordan and I are hybrid athletes. So in the summertime, especially you're going to be sweating more. It's really humid here in Nebraska. So we really need to focus on electrolyte consumption when going outside and, and sweating. But the best time to do this is either before you go on a run or even while you're on your run, you could throw it in like a little water bottle. Um, and then after your run, yeah. And as far as like amount in our product specifically, we have 500 milligrams of sodium. So you could potentially take two scoops if you needed to. If you're running outside, you're, you're doing a super long run and you're losing lots of sweat, especially if you're a really salty sweater. If your sweat gets really white, like on your clothing or on your hat, 
Um, That's me. (laughs) That typically means you're a salty sweater and your body needs even more electrolytes. So um, as far as, you know, a normal average person, I would just do the one scoop. But if, again, if you're, you're out running a marathon or doing a triathlon, you could definitely double even triple dose yeah and and that's something we've documented on youtube you know even in our half marathon training prep and and everybody's different but typically yeah even if you're not working out a day usually i'll do a scoop of electrolytes every day and th- like i said that just helps maintain neutrality within um, your muscle and within your blood and and i think a lot of people think that the stigma that salt is bad you know s- sodium you know these low sodium diets we need to cut salt out of our diet and for the general public, for people that are that have certain diseases or they're in hospitals, that's where you see this a lot is you see these really low sodium diets because they're worried about edema. They're worried about fluid retention because these people might be in hospital beds and not moving. So that's the huge thing there. So people kind of take that and like, oh, I need to go low sodium. And every muscle contraction that you have requires electrolytes and it requires sodium to produce that contraction. And if your muscle doesn't have correct electrolyte balance and it doesn't have the amount of sodium that it needs and other electrolytes as well, that muscle contraction is not going to happen. Or that's where you start to see cramping. That's where you start to see huge decreases in performance. So when we're talking about sodium, we're talking about all the electrolytes that help in maintaining performance and maintaining muscle contractions. Same thing on a run. Like you have a bunch of muscle contractions itself. But then you also are are sweating a lot, so you're getting rid of tons of your electrolytes. So that's where replenishing it helps. And I think a lot of people, they don't realize that they need electrolyte supplementation and sodium supplementation, and then they try it, and they're like, wow, I, I feel the difference instantly. I don't have headaches. I don't have this brain fog. You know, I don't have that, like, ill feeling after you run. When we first started running, I think that was something that we felt a lot because we weren't supplementing with electrolytes. And we finish the run and you just feel like crap for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden we supplement with, with electrolytes before and after runs and that goes away. So it just shows you from a, from a personal standpoint of how much that can actually help recover, maintain those electrolyte levels within the muscle and within the blood and just get you back to, to feeling as close to hundred percent as possible. Yeah. And as far as like these low sodium diets, going back on what you said about that, I think a lot of that is more so like avoiding more of like the processed foods that contain different types of sodium and over like, like over a thousand milligrams of sodium that in each meal. So yes, there is a, you know, limit to how much sodium you should be eating based off of like the food that you're, you're eating, but if you're eating whole foods, you know, minimal processed foods, the chances of you having too much salt, too much sodium in your diet are are very rare. So, um, I think that is where that whole concept came into play is because a lot of processed foods, if you flip over the container and look at how much sodium's in it, it, they're typically like, you know, crazy high. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy high. One meal. Yep. Yeah. Like, um, frozen food meal. If you go in the frozen aisle and you pick up one of those like lean cuisines or whatever they are, those frozen foods, flip it over, look at the packaging. It's those, those sodium levels are high because they're trying to add preservatives to keep those foods from shelf life. Yeah. Yeah. From yep. going bad. So or like ramen. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know, I think there's a difference between having added natural salts into your diet. We're talking, you know, salt, magnesium, potassium in this specific supplement that's zero sugar, you know? Um, so that to me is, is totally different than the, the, the stigma of grabbing something at the store that contains over thousands of milligrams in, in sodium just for one meal, even yeah. going out to, to a restaurant too, you know, half the time it's like they load up on just like table salt or, yep you know, uh, dressings or sauces or seasons, all those things, you know, if you're, if you're paying attention to those things, the chances of you getting enough sodium in your diet are, are very rare. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the whole thing I think we're trying to get across here is like salt, you know, too much salt, table salt, uh, iodized salt, stuff like that. Yeah, like, yeah, we probably shouldn't be putting iodized salt on every single meal. That's, yeah. that's not the way to go. 
But what we are saying is you can use salt, you know, on your food. Um, I would stick to more like pink Himalayan salt, stuff like that, sea salt. Um, But we also want the balance of sodium, magnesium, and potassium. Those are three really crucial electrolytes that are going to help in increasing that performance. Our product has 500 milligrams of sodium, we have 400 milligrams of potassium, and 40 milligrams of magnesium. So we have a good balance of each, and that huge difference too, where you know I think electrolytes, where they first become became popularized, were by Gatorade, yeah. and that's great. You know, like if you're a football athlete and you're out there sweating like crazy, yeah, you're probably going to need that extra sugar that Gatorade provides. Yeah. But most of the time, we don't want that excess sugar. So that's the whole idea is you're getting electrolytes that you need without the additional 20, 30, 40, 50 grams of sugar that would come from a Gatorade. Um, There might be certain times where you would want that maybe intra-workout or intra-run type deal where you would want those carbohydrates or going on a really long run. That's where we might mix like our electrolyte with some like powdered dextrose or something like that to help improve our performance and we can talk a little about that later you know like how we would how would we we would use an electrolyte product how does that fit into our day you know on a day where we don't work out on a strength training day or on a long run day or you know how we how we supplement with electrolytes that'd be something we could go through but that's the whole thing is the balance of electrolytes sodium magnesium and potassium it's not just table salt you don't just want to like oh i sweated a bunch i need to go put a bunch of morton's iodized salt on my food Mm that's not the same as electrolyte supplementation. Yeah, and like you mentioned with Gatorades, those things can be great, but they do add a lot of like dyes too. So you have all these different flavors. Yes, they may be zero sugar, but they're adding in dyes. And we're trying to keep this more of like a natural, no additives, um, and you just mix it with water. And it, it tastes great too. That was something that we definitely take pride into is making, making sure that it tastes great and mixes well. Yep. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's a huge piece. So let's go into next. How do we use something or how do we use electrolytes in our training? We can talk about on a day we don't work out on a day that we strength train on a day that we go for a run. What does that look like around the workouts? Yeah. So I actually just typically start my day off with electrolytes. If I know that I'm going to be going on a run, I will drink some of those at the beginning of the day and then drink the rest of it later on around my run after my run. Um, and like I mentioned before, depending on how much I sweat, how long the run is, you know, if it's super sweaty and hot and humid outside in Nebraska, then I will even add in a little bit more electrolytes, but sipping on them throughout the day is so beneficial too, because it's going to help with your, your, um, body from getting sick too. So it's going to help with your immune system when we go through these phases of getting sick and we have, you know, episodes of diarrhea, we're dehydrating our body. So this also can be used to help hydrate in a situation like that. So it's going to help you help your body as far as everyday use and pre running. And then as far as like working out, um, I just drink it throughout my workout. Mm -hmm. Just, I don't sweat a lot when I'm lifting, but again, it's not necessarily like, Oh, I'm sweating. I need electrolytes. It's something that I just take daily and I feel good taking it. I don't get any headaches. I have energy. I constantly feel hydrated as far as like going to the restroom. I'm not like, you know, like holding that, having that feeling of like, I don't have to go to the bathroom. I'm, I'm going regularly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, uh, you know, just because you're not this crazy sweater doesn't mean that you don't need electrolytes. Like I mentioned earlier, when you're lifting every muscle contraction that you do requires sodium and other electrolytes to produce that muscle contraction. So if you're deficient, that's where those things start to not happen. So typically what I'll do is same thing. I'll take a serving every day of electrolytes if I'm working out or not. If I'm not working out, I'll just take it. Maybe I'll drink it like, like a a nice ice cold drink. I'll mix some water in it. Obviously this flavor is freaking bomb. I'm a little biased, but pink starburst tastes so good. So I always have one at least every day. If I'm strength training, I'll drink it during my workout. So that helps just keep electrolyte levels where they need to be, um, helps with the pump a little bit. And it also helps because you're, I, I am somebody that is sweaty. So that does help myself um, not start to start to taper towards the end of the workouts. Mm-hmm. If I'm running, it really depends. You know, 
if it's a long run, I'll always do electrolytes before run, no matter what the run is. If it's short, if it's long, if it's intervals, you know, as we're getting into summer, I typically will supplement with electrolytes during a workout. So if I can, I can carry a, a handheld water bottle. And then again, after the workout, I'll do another serving. Um, I'm somebody like I just went for a run today and I was just absolutely drenched. It was super humid out. So that didn't help, but I sweat a lot when it's like 30 degrees for runs. It's like 80, 90 degrees and it's humid. I'm sweating like crazy. So I always take one before typically during, and then always after as well. So that's typically how I structure my electrolyte supplementation. And you feel the difference right away. Like I know it's, it, if I go for a run and I don't drink electrolytes afterwards, you get this like flu sick type feeling and it's the worst. So that's something you instantly feel the difference of using electrolytes to fill in the cracks of your diet. Yeah, I agree. And as far as our kids, they're in select baseball too. And we were just talking about getting them on an electrolyte and you can fill it up in like a really big water bottle and just sip on it throughout the day. Or if you like that extra salty flavor, cause it does have a salt flavor to yeah. it, which takes a little bit to get used to it's like strawberry salt. Yep. Yeah. You, you could condense the water, but I personally like to put it in like a, a large Stanley cup and just sip on it throughout the day and same with the boys when they're out in the heat all day and playing baseball one of our boys is a pitcher and the other one's a catcher and so they're constantly working hard sweating Sweating. yep yeah so um, making those switches and and like we said there's no artificial flavors no sugar so i I feel good giving them something like that opposed to to a gatorade yeah how many gatorades have we blown through in the past where just you give them a gatorade and you're just giving them sugar and it's like you know sometimes that's okay yeah but the whole idea behind that gatorade is to make sure that they're hydrated yeah why not use an electrolyte supplement that has zero sugar minimal and it has better better proportions of magnesium sodium and, and potassium not to call Gatorade out, but their proportions are not where they need to be, mm-hmm. especially comparative to the salt or sorry, the, the sugar that they're putting in their product. So yeah. that's something that's why they came out with like Gator lights and stuff like that, because mm-hmm. they realized that a regular Gatorade doesn't have the amount of sodium, potassium, magne- magnesium that, that we need to actually maintain and help improve electrolyte neutrality. So that's a huge thing that I, I agree. I feel better mixing up one or two scoops in their water bottle and have them sip on it before the game, during the game, keep them hydrated rather than just giving them a Gatorade, especially just like you said, the artificial dyes and sweeteners that are in that, which that's a whole nother podcast that we could get into. Yeah. But, um, that's, that's a huge thing that I do feel better about giving them that. Yeah. Even if you look on the back of a Gatorade bottle, the, um, label has a ton more ingredients because they're putting in those extra dyes and, and, Again, shelf life, it comes in a bottle, comes in a plastic bottle, you know. So comparatively, we we would just rather give them something that we are confident in and we, you know, take ourselves. Yep. But um, so let's kind of talk about like the day to day of taking this supplement and besides working out for like the average person, why why would the average person need this? No, I think that's that's a great question. And I think you know, the biggest thing is that we can talk about there. If you're the average person that you're not super sweaty, you don't work out all the time, you can still benefit from having electrolyte neutrality. I think a lot of people are walking around, not drinking enough water in the first place. Dehydrated. They're dehydrated just in general. And even if they are drinking enough water, you're diluting your blood plasma and your, your electrolyte levels. So supplementing with electrolytes will help maintain that electrolyte neutrality. I think it also just helps, like you said, one way that that I've that I'd recommend to get more water is mix maybe a scoop or two of this in a really big jug, mm-hmm. and that's going to help you drink more water because of the extra flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, that mixes well, has a good flavor. It, it tastes awesome. Obviously, like I said, I'm I'm pretty impartial, but mm-hmm. uh, I love the pink Starburst flavor, and that's just going to help you stay hydrated. Where hydration, we always correlate like water with hydration, and yeah. that's half of the puzzle, but we're missing the electrolyte piece to that too as well. So. This can prevent getting sick. This can prevent headaches, uh, muscle cramps, fatigue, all these types of things that you're going to see if you're experiencing, experiencing dehydration. Um, 
and people are walking around like this every day where they're chronically dehydrated and they're like, man, why do I not feel good? Why, why, why do I not, brain? yeah, why do I, why do I not feel my best? Why am I foggy? Why am I low energy? Why am I, um, having a hard time focusing? Like, let me grab some more caffeine. Yes. Let me get some more caffeine. Let's have some coffee and let's dehydrate ourselves even more. And that's and then the you're huge here, thing. And then you crash. Yes. So <laughs> there's a huge benefit for anyone looking to feel better, um, and maintain better electrolyte neutrality even if you don't work out or sweat like crazy or do these really intense workouts yeah you know as you were bringing up water it made me think too like there are some stories out there where people have died from drinking too much water yeah hyponatremia yep yeah so you know there is there's that you could overdo water consumption because you're flushing out all of those the magnesium, the potassium, all those things that your body needs and those pH balance get, those pH balances are out of whack and, and that can essentially kill you. Yeah. I think people think of all the time about being dehydrated from not drinking enough water, Yeah, but there's always like the spectrum of like too much, too little. Like if you just went and you chugged like a gallon of water and you're really dehydrated, what's going to happen is you might run into a situation like that. That's critical. That's life threatening because what you're doing, like you said, is you're diluting your blood plasma and your electrolyte level within the blood. And Mm -hmm. what happens is, like we said, every function that our body does requires electrolytes to provide contraction, movement, any sort, yes, your heart, (laughs) like any sort of process takes electrolytes. So you've diluted all the electrolytes. That were already low. That were already low, exactly. So there's always two sides of the spectrum. And that's the big thing that I think we're trying to achieve with this podcast is for people to understand that water is not enough with just having water. It's great. We want to drink enough water. Our body's made up a ton of water. Um, We need to have at least half our body weight in ounces, bare minimum every single day. But electrolyte supplementation is also something we want to take seriously. And I always think of like a good, better, best. Like a good is going to be like drinking an okay amount of water. The better option is going to be drinking half your body weight in ounces and evenly spacing that throughout the day. The best is going to be drinking half your body weight in ounces, but also using electrolyte supplementation to stay hydrated every single day. Yeah. And a a sign of drinking like too much water and not enough electrolytes and and balancing those levels out too is going to the bathroom a lot. So if you're going to the bathroom constantly, you're just flushing out all of that. Yeah. And, and so if you're chugging gallons and gallons of water, it's just going to come right, right through you, come right out. Whereas an electrolyte, you know, it's going to keep you hydrated and have you go to the bathroom, but it's also going to help balance out those levels and not cause you to be running to the bathroom every second. Yeah. Ironically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. And then another thing I want to mention too, is, um, as far as like, you know, being dehydrated and, those like the prevention of dehydration is you know taking this supplement has helped me stay hydrated a but b also helps me go to the bathroom regularly because of the magnesium and the hydration when you're not drinking enough fluids and keeping those levels you know proportionate and balanced sometimes it can cause you to want to hold on to toxins and this product specifically has helped me with my regularity of going to the bathroom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying going to the bathroom, the magnesium, talking about yep. number two. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a good point. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just that hydration and, and helping everything move throughout the digestive tract. Yep. No, that's a, that's a great point. I think there's, there's many uses for electrolyte supplementation. And I think what we're trying to, the whole point we're trying to get across is that salt is not bad. And more importantly, you need a full electrolyte profile to maintain neutrality. We're not saying go dump a bunch of salt on your food. That's not what we're saying. We were like, oh, Jordan Alyssa said salt's not bad, so I'm just going to salt everything. (laughs) That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is that you need the correct balance of magnesium, potassium, and sodium. Those are the three most important, crucial um, electrolytes to maintain neutrality, especially for those that exercise, are intense with their workouts, and are sweating, and are losing electrolytes through your sweat. So... You can still salt your food with like a sea salt or we use, we use pink Himalayan sea salt a lot on mm-hmm. like our sweet potatoes or vegetables and stuff like that, but naturally, naturally, exactly. And not processed, not just, not just this processed iodized Morton salt. It's different than just your regular table salt. 
Yeah. So this isn't giving you the invitation to go buy all the higher sodium foods. Yes. You know, still read those labels, still buy the low sodium beans, low sodium soy sauces, things like that, um, sauces in general and seasonings, but add the sodium from a good quality source like an electrolyte or the Himalayan or sea salt. Yeah, yeah exactly. So thanks for tuning in, guys, to our podcast I want to say thanks for supporting our brand. And if you are interested in checking out our pink starburst fit grind electrolyte, like I said, it's currently now available, uh, head over to fitgrindformula.com or like I said, if you're watching on YouTube, the link in the comments in the description below. So thanks for tuning in guys and we'll see you guys in the next podcast.